Hello, I am Sally Hitchener. I'm Reverend Sally Hitchener, and I lead a large multi-faith chaplaincy and part of a university in North London, Northwest London. Uh, and I also I lecture a bit on ethics and of, uh, particularly ethics of how uh, people of faith can engage in a secular workspace and how we can present our views. And I'm here today to talk about how to, how to stand up for what we believe in. I also lead an organization uh, called Diverse Church. Diverse Church was something I sort of fell into. I didn't mean to really set it up. Uh, it, I, it happened because we had a number of young LGBT people come and talk to me in my role as chaplain, and uh, they needed support, and I just thought they need to really meet each other. So we formed this secret uh, Facebook group, and t together we've actually ended up doing uh, a lot uh, of building up each other and uh, making a difference in the wider church. We're not really a political group. Most people uh, who joined Diverse Church uh, are just struggling to sort of survive from seven or eight or nine years of existing in the church that isn't necessarily supporting them. Uh, and so we are a pastoral care group. We look after each other and we are a community. But we do believe in a certain type of activism, storytelling activism or storyvism, as we call it. So and we're gonna, I'm going to include a little bit of that in what I have to say today. I think I'm not really an activist. I, I found this title quite a difficult one to engage with. Uh, I think I'm what I would actually call an accidental activist. I don't mean that what I do isn't strategic, but I don't easily fit the label of activist. I'm more of a cup of tea and how you're doing sort of person. I tried to explain this to the Green Milk Committee, and their response was, well, you could have fooled us. I seem to end up in a lot of situations of doing activism, but without really intending to be there, without realizing what, what I, I've done to end up there, beyond genuinely caring. And I wonder if there are quite a few other accidental activists who are out there, maybe people who have ended up caring about things that have led you to uh, make a difference in the world, or maybe would be accidental activists. And I found two or three things that I think have helped me along my journey that I'd like to share with you that might help you in that. Firstly, know what you believe. And by this, I don't mean know what your response is to every ethical issue that comes up in the world today. Should we eat at McDonald's? Where should we buy our clothes? What should we do about the problem of Justin Bieber? How do we make a difference in the world? But what do you, meet, what do you really believe on a more fundamental level? What, beyond how you would respond to individual situations, what is it that makes you, you? For me, I've become obsessed with these ideas that God loves everybody, that, that there is hope for every single person on the planet because God comes down and is with us in our suffering and has found a way through to resurrection life, that it has meaning for each person and that no situation is beyond hope because of that. And these things have just have gone around in my head, and this idea of community has just got into me. And I, I see it a bit like Google Glasses, where you sort of see things popping up when you look down a street. And it, these ideas pop up in most inconvenient of moments. Activism is more of a who than a do. So if you want to be an acti accidental activist, work on who you are. Henri Nouan, uh, a, a, a great author, wrote that if you want to see revival, take a piece of chalk, bend down, draw a circle around your feet, and pray for revival to come to everything within that circle. And then you will see revival breaking out into the wider world. Standing up for what you believe in doesn't start with a conversation where you confront the racist at work or the unfair practices in your church. It starts much deeper, much more fundamentally, and it starts with how much are you willing to care how much are you willing to let revival break out in your own heart? And how much are you willing to allow people to affect you? It starts the day that we begin to see the world in a different light. The day that we realize that it's important uh, to, that we follow this path, even if not everyone else does. To make a difference, you have to be different. Someone once said that volunteering to lead is like, a bit like volunteering to be ugly. I think we have to be realistic of the fact that to be an accidental activist, to stand up for what you believe in, is not going to always win you friends. St. John of the Cross said, if we do not burn with love for others, then we will die of the cold. 
I think the alternatives to not being accidental activists are far worse than the costs that we will face from having to do this. Accidental activism is always often caught rather than, stu uh, rather than studied. You hear a talk at Greenbelt inspiring you to shop ethically. You meet a colleague who's passionate about vegetarianism. You read a character in a book who inspires you to stick your neck out and care for an oppressed group. Soren Kierkegaard uh, talked about how reading the New Testament uh, should be something that radically changes our lives. It's a dangerous business, but we insulate ourselves against the life-destructing words of care for the poor and love your enemies by creating theologies and well-meaning preaching and books that, that skim over those bits and head to the bits that we want to hear about in Jesus' teaching. He said uh, how fearful it is to be left in the room alone with the New Testament. The first step towards making a significant change is letting yourself be changed. The second thing I've learnt, and you'll be pleased to hear that these are shorter than the first, is that to make a difference, you have to do it from the inside. This isn't always the case. There are some people who are called to be the first voice creating uh, furrows of a field that will allow seed to be planted. And they take an even more sacrificial path. They become like the uh, Old Testament prophets who are there to inspire others to begin to see the world differently, but who are rarely thanked within their lifetimes. In my line of thinking within the LGBT world, the Peter Tatchells or the Colin Cowards who have self-sacrificially forged a way, shouting from outside the camp that there needs to be change and we need to see it now. One Peter talks a lot about this, but it talks about a different way for Christians to be, that we have to bring change from within. Christians are not called to be colonizers, those who enforce our views on others from outside. We're not called to be like second generation immigrants who uh, absorb themselves so much into the surrounding culture that they wear the same clothes as the surrounding culture, they eat the same food, and they, there's very little difference, there's very little awareness of their heritage. We're also not called to be like first-generation immigrants who create little havens of people who think exactly like us, little ghettos where we can actually just find people who are like us and from our backgrounds. We're called to be uh, different and we're called to make a difference. We're not outsiders who either seek to be the same as others or who seek to strenuously maintain the status of the outsider. Christians are by definition those who are born again. We are born from within the place of the old. We do not have the luxury of shouting from the outside. To make a really lasting change, we have to, and if we are people who read the gospels, we have to be people who are bringing a change from within. And my third and final point is that to be an accidental activist, to stand up for what you believe in, you have to tell your story. We are often people who, who feel bashful about telling our stories. We're English. We don't tend to talk about ourselves. But there was a quote by, I'm going to end with by Lee Harvey Milk, who said that uh, somewhere in San Antonio, there's a young person who realizes that she or he is gay and that if anyone finds out about them, that they'll be excluded from their families, from their faith communities, and from their friends. And they're left with two options. Either they end their lives now, or they bury who they are so deep inside of themselves that no one gets to find out who they are. And then they hear the, t hear the words, homosexual elected in San Francisco, and they have two more options, either move to San Francisco or stay in Texas and fight. His story inspired so many people through being honest to who he was and caring about who he was, he inspired so many to make a difference. And we in Diverse Church and me as an accidental activist, we're trying to muddle our way through, actually trying to inspire others through being embodied and being within the system and being part of the mess and telling our stories and helping others to see change. Thank you.